Welcome back to Now Playing, everybody. I'm Kevin Van Ord, and I am seated next to the great Curtis Side. Hey, nice to see you, everybody. Said, pardon me. Yes, you know, it's why, said. why did I do that? It's not the first time I I've mean, done I mean, even if either. you mispronounce it, it's fine with me. It's one of those EI before yeah, there's a rule, yeah. right? <laughs> so, anyway, Curtis and I are here because we're going to be playing Dark Souls. And um, we both played incredible amounts of Dark Souls at this point, mm -hmm. and we know that a lot of you have seen some of the same stuff um, over and over again. Um, on different, in different places. So we wanted to show you some new type stuff. Uh, a warning though before we get in, part of the, the, the joy of Dark Souls is the thrill of discovery. Um, so if you're sensitive to spoilers, if you don't want to see anything um, because you want everything to be fresh, just a warning, we are showing lots of the game today, um, or at least places that you probably haven't seen mm -hmm. yet. So just a, a bit of a warning there. I mean, um, in your own game, we're uh, halfway through at least. This, this is more than, this, this particular save is more, is more than halfway through. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's lots, to, there's lots of interesting things to see that you probably haven't seen yet. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look and uh, see where we're at in Dark Souls. Um, this is an uh, interesting character. Here's what I've got equipped right now. Um, I've got one of these Silver Knight shields that I got from when I was over in Anor Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've upgraded that a little bit. And I've got a lightning spear, um, which I'm using instead of my mace. I do love my mace, but uh, I decided to switch over. So what's your equipment load like? Are you fast? Are you slow? I'm sort of a combination of good defense and some pretty good speed, all things considered. Um, these are um, gold-trimmed ropes. Um, and they, they, they do a pretty good job of uh, keeping me protected, but still giving me some speed. And this is somebody that we prob you probably haven't seen in a lot of the coverage. And this is you said this is the King Seeker, right? Yes. Um, I am pleased to see and you he well. he doesn't appear is at the beginning of the game. Else? He appears a little bit later in the in the central part of Dark Souls, um, which is, or at least the, the beginning hub area, which is called Firelink Shrine. Um, and he's nice because in Demon Souls you couldn't trade in anything for souls, but you can actually feed him different items. Um, so let's go ahead and feed him something just so you get an idea of what it is. So you can you can see if I feed him something, what its value is over to the right. And I'll just feed him one of these swords. And then I'll get 100 souls for that. But he'll also um, break down some of these chunks mm -hmm. um, of, of titanite that you get in various places if you want to break it down um, into shards and, ch and regular chunks and stuff like that. I don't want to do that because I hold on to the special chunks. Um, but uh, if you want... If you yeah, want to, I mean, you it's really it easy here. to buy smaller uh, versions of those instead of having him break down the rare ones that he, you have already in your inventory. Exactly. Those things are, are found more commonly, so you usually don't want to take something so rare and, and, uh, and turn that into a lesser item if you can avoid it. Now, it looks like we're getting in some questions from the users. Uh, they want to know, is the story as good as the gameplay? Well, no. I mean, in, in a word. Um, Dark Souls doesn't tell much of a... Um, much of a story per se. Stay it's all about discovering your own adventure. There's a, there's a story here, for sure. Um, but it, it comes to you differently than you might expect from a standard game narrative. It comes to you in bits and pieces. And it's about, you know, you get more story from the environments that you traverse, from, you know, little characters that you talk to that, that have little laughs. And, and they, they give you bits and pieces. Um, and then it starts to sort of form mm -hmm. as, as you play. I mean, I mostly found the story to be pretty generic. It's like, you're, well, for, an interesting thing is you're undead, and that's the main thing, but it's really, you're on an adventure to save the land, fight some demons. You're, it, you're just starting off ringing, ringing two bells to open a gate. Right, and there's, it's more about lore than it is about story, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so it's more about discovering the history of this place. Now here we, we come to the altar. Um, now part of, the, part of the story is actually you have to defeat um, four major demons in order to retrieve their souls and feed it into the Lord Vessel that you see here um, at the altar. And in doing so, um, you, you sort of save the world from this, this blight of inhumanity. Um, but really, this is a better place to come because I want to warp um, to various areas. And we were, we were talking about um, heading off to uh, a few different places. I want to go to, because uh, I know you want to do um, the chamber, right? You want to yes. go to the chamber of the princess. Um, I want to go to the Daughter of Chaos first because I think this is an area that a lot of people haven't seen. And I'm probably going to get my butt handed to me, but I'm going to give it a try mm. because I mean, this, this area is, a very, is pretty rough. Yeah, this is a very dangerous area covered with lava. You're pretty much in hell. It's known as the Demon's Ruins, and it's rough. Right. Um, this is after this particular area. Now, the reason I can warp to this, um, this, this uh, bonfire, by the way, 
is because I'm a member of a covenant um, that, that gives me access Actually, to this particular Actually, that's not completely true. No? I can get there and I have not joined as a member. I lied oh. to them and said I'm going to join. Oh, I see. So you don't. So it's really act, just yeah. about getting into the area because yes. this is a secret area. Mm -hmm. This is not. Um, this is not an area that you can generally get into. There's a. There's a hidden wall, um, that you have to bust open. So yeah, if other users, uh, anybody watching this, if you have any questions about the game, you can look in the chat and ask us anything related to Dark Souls. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and, and ask any questions you want, and uh, we will be happy to uh, mislead you. So uh, let's let's head down here. Pretty dark. Thankfully, now these things are kind of interesting, but this gives me a chance. It, they'll, they'll start breathing mm -hmm. fire on me if I get too close. But this gives me a chance to show off a little of my pyromancy. What's nice, at least, is your uh, golden robes are actually pretty good against all sorts of elements, including fire and lightning. Yeah, I, I, I get pretty good defense against the elements. And using my... Uh, Stabby, stabby. Now I've personally made a strength build character, so when I hit those things, they die immediately. Yeah. But, but you have the added bonus of having lightning, which probably helps in a lot of fights. Yeah, it does. And and to keep in mind that um, oh hello, um, that this isn't like I haven't upgraded this weapon a lot. The reason I started using it, oops hello. Um, the reason I started using it is simply because my mace broke. Um, there's a there's an enemy down here that um, basically in one vomit um, broke my mace, and so in the middle of a fight I had to switch. Now can you repair that mace, or is it gone? I forever? could repair the mace, and I can't see. Now I'm gonna try to get out of the way. That would probably be a good time to heal. <laughs> yeah. So what's your uh, Estus Flask uh, at at the moment? It's, it's um, well, I've got plus three Estus Flask here. Um, plus, I have, um, plus I have 10 because I, uh, because I kindled at this particular spot. So why don't you go ahead and tell people kind of how the, how the health system works and, um, and how you can sort of upgrade that okay. as you go through the game. Uh, you start off with just five Estus Flasks, and each of them are just a normal one. There's no plus one, plus twos, anything like that. And as you spend your humanity and become human, you can use your remainder of humanity and upgrade various bonfires so they wield more flasks, either starting at 10. They go all the way to 20, which is the one I try to use. It requires a lot of farming of humanity, so expect to not get that for quite a while. But the other thing is, you'll find what's called Firekeeper Souls, and that's what add the plus one, the plus two, and that makes each flask much more powerful. I found four of them so far, so I actually have a plus four flask. Oh, great. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a plus three here. Um, let's go ahead and work our way down, because I really want to go, if I can, I want to show off an area called New Isolate. Um, I don't really want to go in there. Well, I could if everybody wants to see me die, which is always a fun thing. This is Dark Souls, of course, so one thing people tune in for is for death. But it's, as you can attest, it's sort of a scary area. Mm -hmm. Um, and this character is definitely not prepared to wander in there too far. But I do think it's an interesting place to see, and I want to show that off. I know you want to, you were showing off the combat, but I actually didn't tell you there's a shortcut down there past those enemies. Down here? Yeah. No, actually, oh, no? if you had walked the other way, you could have just rolled down here. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. If I'd, you I'd take, rather take the long way. Yeah, you take damage, and it's not that interesting, but it's short. We're gonna go. I'll go ahead and rest. And a little bit. I, I definitely have some humanity. I think in my inventory. So I think it would be kind of nice if I uh, go ahead and and, um, and restore myself back to human form, um, so that I could potentially be invaded. Mm -hmm. We are playing online. So we are online. If we so. do become human, we can join with you, or you might invade us. Yep. Or uh, maybe yeah, I could uh, drop my summon stone as well. But uh, like I said, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in here, but I did want to see this because I think most people haven't seen. Um, this is actually where uh, you fight the centipede boss. He has been vanquished, so I will try to come on up through. 
Now, at first, I didn't realize that there's actual ring that protects you from that lava, and I just ran through most of it. There is. I think I have it equipped, actually. I don't. Let's go ahead. That's the one. So yeah, much lighter damage. And without that, you pretty much die instantly trying to run through that length. Yep, sure do. I'm trying to think, is there anything here? This looks like a secret wall if ever there was one. Mm -hmm. but I figure you might, if you open it, it's probably from the other side. Yeah. Yeah, but actually I think this is the place where you, you beat this boss and then you open a, a door that's in a different spot. So I'll try to head out there. Oh, you know what? Obviously I haven't explored enough because look what I found. It's probably just going to be a soul. Yeah, I think it's like a proud knight. Oh, no, a shard. A shard, very nice. Now that's good for upgrading, I believe, divine magic weapons and fire weapons. If you want to upgrade, say, lightning or darkness or other things like chaos, you need other special shards. But let's head on out of here. Is it on the other side of here? No, 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 backtrack and go to the left this time. It or is all the way up. Up here? Are you trying to look for the enemies I'm, in this area? Well, I'm trying to remember how to get to New Isolith because I wanted to show oh, yes. off New Isolith. It's back down. Okay. And there's a fireplace nearby, so you can drop if you want. That's true. Oh, not that far. Oh, no, I did. Hooray. A fireplace, did you say? Well, bonfire. I think that's cute. It's a fireplace. The bonfires. This way? Yes, and should be to the left. Excellent. I trust you, Mr. Curtis said. You sure now? Yeah. All right. There should be a tunnel on the left, and you'll find I must a have knight completely missed it. Sitting by your side. I think you were distracted by that door over there that you swore you could open. Oh yeah, you're right. Here's the tunnel. Ah yes, I knew there was. Th I knew that's how you got here. <laughs> I forgot where the tunnel was. There we go. Okay, now here we go. This is uh, this is where I wanted to show. And you'll notice Kevin hasn't kindled this fire, so his meter of Estus Flask is not restoring to a full ten. Yeah, it's always it's going to default to five unless I've uh, up updated that particular part. Here we go. One of the areas in the game that takes a little bit of a frame rate hit. This and um, and Blight Town are the two places that really that really make it uh, a little bit tougher to explore with a frame rate. But those are really the only places. Oops. So there you go. You see basically these enormous brontosaurus. <laughs> off in the distance, everything made of fire. This is actually really interesting because of course I, I tailored myself, I started this character as a cleric um, and eventually he sort of turned into a, um, into a knight slash pyromancer. But pyromancy has done me almost no good through here. It does with certain enemies. But uh, let's, let's watch me die because there's pretty much no chance I'm not going to die. Yeah, you're kind of pretty weak for this area at the moment, but have and you I'm ever also stuck in that spot? Have you ever gotten so powerful <laughs> enough that some bosses were just way too easy? Yeah, it's it's funny um, because when you go into this particular area, you have to go through two bosses. You have to go through um, what's the name of the first demon? The, the fire stray demon. Yeah, there's a fire demon that you mm. you you go through, and then there's the centipede demon, and uh, those were they were both really easy. Um, actually, compared to uh, all the stuff that's around them. Um, but I think people would rather see some gameplay in combat. So in that case, um, let's go to, let's head to Anor Orlando. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. This way people will see something a little more interesting. Um, and somebody's asking if there are a lot of side quests in the game. I, I think that's kind of a misnomer mm. in Dark Souls. Um, it, it doesn't have quests per se. It's not structured in the way that you normally think of, uh, of an RPG. Um, it's, it's more your own personal adventure. So there are 
sort of side quests that you're given, but I, I think that would be misrepresenting to suggest that there are really quests at all. I mean, some of the characters, when you talk to them, they'll mention, hey, I want you to get this certain thing out of a location, but they'll always say, oh, you could never survive that area. Right. Like when you find a blacksmith, say, down in the catacombs, he'll suggest going to new Isolith and getting him uh, an ember, but you don't have to do it, and he'll kind of never mention it again. Yeah. So. Here's, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my mace because it's going to give me, it's going to do a little bit more damage. And um, what I'll do is I'll uh, come on over here and fight one of these knights. These are some, some big dudes um, that aren't that tough, but they, they can pack a punch um, if, you're not, if you're not blocking well. Um, the trick is in a lot of cases, sometimes you'll, um, you'll aggro two at once and you don't really want to do that when you can avoid it. You really only want to get the attention of one enemy at a time when it's an enemy that's this big. Although sometimes they're, they're, they're set up in such a way where you'll aggro two at once, even though it seems like you've, you've only got the attention of one. Yeah, I've tried fighting two at once. It's really hard. Those giant shields are there will block all damage. And there you go, just like that. And just like that again. So Dark Souls takes place in a fantasy realm. What our viewers want to know, do you think this kind of gameplay would work in sort of a futuristic RPG? Well, you say futuristic, um, but that tells me that that's something without swords and, and that kind of thing. But I don't necessarily see why not. I mean, anything that's gonna support close combat um, could work, but this is sort of built around the whole medieval idea of magic and swords and bows and arrows and things like that. You know what I mean? So it, it depends on kind of what weapons you're talking about in the future. Yeah, it would have to be like some sort of Klingon thing where you're <laughs> fighting with a bat lit I can kind or... of see that. <laughs> yeah, but in, the, in, the, in that sense, I mean, a lot of things that we think of as futuristic are, are just takes on, on fantasy. They just happen to exist in the, in the future, if you know what I mean. I nope. mean, what? I mean, really, a lightsaber. All that is, right? Is, is it's just a sword, a, pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's that's just an ancient weapon in, in uh, in future terms. Now we don't have many souls at the moment, but our viewers want to know if we could possibly level up and show that off. I don't know that I'm going to be able to level up, but I can certainly show the leveling up menu when we get to a bonfire, or actually even before we get to a bonfire. And as you see, these guys are, you know, pretty blockable. Um, so rolling around can work, but I've, I've sort of set up, even though I'm pretty mobile, um, I've sort of set up so that I have a lot of endurance, um, all things considered, or a lot of stamina. With these particular enemies, I like going to the left side always, because you never run a risk of hitting their shield, so right. you always do a little bit of damage. And let's take this one, and we can go up into the archives maybe, where I will probably not be as successful. But the archives are an interesting place, and that's probably another place that people haven't seen in, in previous coverage. Come on. That's right. Get it a big attack. Boom. One, one important element of Dark Souls is stamina management because everything you do takes up stamina. Every swing, you know, every attack, not magic. Magic does not take up stamina. But anything physically that you do does. Whether I'm blocking something, um, when I'm holding up my shield, stamina doesn't replenish as quickly. Um, heavy attacks take up more stamina than light attacks, and so on and so forth. Also, I'm gonna change rings because there's no reason for me to uh, to be using that ring. I'm gonna put on my favorite ring, which is the Ring of the Evil Eye, which I've had for quite a long time, that absorbs that HP. Um, health is obviously important in a game in which you die so much or die so easily. Um, the other ring I have, by the way, is a white seance ring. Um, and what that does is it gives me a separate attunement slot, which is fantastic, because I only have two natively, and so I usually, or I have, yeah, I have um, three natively, actually. The problem is that one of my spells, the one that you see there, the Great Chaos Fireball, takes up two attunement slots. And so now I can essentially have four normal spells, or in this case, one big spell and two normal spells because the Chaos Ring gave me an extra slot. And I, otherwise, I would have had to spend enough souls to gain two levels. 
So that's essentially two levels worth of attunement slots that I got for free with that ring. Yeah, I use that ring as well. I only have one attunement slot on my character, and I like to have that one both to slow enemies with uh, the Walk of Tranquility, which slows anyone that comes near you, right. as well as I use Homeworld, which takes me back to a fire or a bonfire that's closest to me. You know, I, I kind of want to, just to show off stuff though, I kind of want to change armor. Just, I'm not used to using some of this armor, but I think it's fun to like kind of look at, at the different things. So I'm going to put on the Black Iron outfit because I think it looks cool. There's, I have no other reason for it just because I think that this outfit looks kind of cool. And you probably don't have the stamina or equip load to handle that kind of armor. Well, but you know what? Have you acquired the uh, Havel Ring? I do have the Havel Ring. Mm. So what we'll do, and for readers that are wondering what this means, I basically have this ring that boosts equipment loads. So how agile you are um, depends on um, how much equipment you can stand based on your stamina levels. So in this case, I actually can move about with a little bit more more speed, and I can uh, I don't use as much stamina when I block and things like that when I wear that ring. So, very very helpful. Oh, you know what? Somebody asked about the leveling, didn't they? I don't have enough souls to level up, but to give you an idea, here's here's sort of how this character has has been leveled up. And you see over on the right, attunement slots four out of four. Um, the reason is because I'm wearing that ring. If I were to remove that ring, it would say three out of three, which is which is kind of nice, but uh, in this case, endurance is the highest thing. Um, blocking and being able to roll about is so important in this game, and I've just decided that I'm going to focus a lot on that. Not so, you know, a lot of strength and a lot of vitality, but not nearly as much as how you've yeah. sort of tailored your character. At the moment, uh, my character is level 83, and I have 40 strength, so I can carry some really huge weapons. Right. Um, but, um, yeah. I, I definitely, and that's sort of how when I played Demon Souls, that's how I sort of went to was the endurance route. And I like the way I've built my character. It's probably not as specialized as I should be, but on the other hand, I feel like as I've leveled up, I've, I've sort of put myself in a position where I can be, um, where I can approach things in different ways, where I can be uh, a little bit more. Uh, you have a backup just in case your main yeah. weapon doesn't work. Exactly. Don't you love when I search for words and I can't come up with them? Yeah, it's always one fun. of my favorite things on earth. So let's go ahead. This is I love the Duke's archives as well um, because it it looks so much different from all the other places. And somebody's asking about the bonfires, whether they're really well distanced, um, are they too far, are they too near? I would say for the most part they're spaced really well. They're spaced far enough away that you never feel that you're really safe. Um, but there's, they're close enough where it doesn't feel unfair. Yeah, I think there are a couple instances where it almost seems like they're too close. Like, why'd you just put a bonfire right over there? I was just at one. Right. I'm going to try to get a, a backstab here. One of my favorite things about these enemies as well as other enemies in the game is the, like, kind of the magical glitter that erupts when you attack them <laughs> that you see there. I mean, you are smashing into crystals, so maybe yeah, that's Yeah, I, I like when you, any crystal creature does this. Um, the same is true of the ones down in, in, in Darkwood Basin. Which is where you first see that effect. So our viewers want to know, is there a lot of variation in the combat, or does the fun come from perfecting your own kind of one style? It sort of depends on how you like to play. I mean, part of the fun is that you can be consistent, but I think, unlike in Demon's Souls, where it was much easier to be really consistent about how you played, um, Dark Souls really puts you in a position where you can try out different things. Um, you know, every weapon has its own rhythm. Like, this mace feels different than, um, for example, the, the spear that I was using before. Um, some weapons are, are, are fast, some are slow, um, and different bosses kind of, re you know, can, can support different kinds of, of ways of going about them. Um, so in some cases, like, I find that being heavy and, um, and kind of being slow about things is the better way. Sometimes I feel like being agile is much better. So it, you are definitely in a position where you can try out new things, but... Yeah, and you can treat your armor and your weapons differently. I like to run around in, say, lighter armor, but still carry around a heavy weapon. So it yep. makes a nice little contrast. 
Well, that's kind of what I have with, with the robes that I had on, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't think that I would then be going so much for, you know, for stamina, but it's, it's just sort of how things evolved and, 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 you know, to support my play style, so. I like that there's a lot of variety in how you can do things. Lark is convinced that um, playing as a sorcerer is, uh, is easy mode, um, and in a sense he is right, um, but I would say that it's sort of a misnomer in this game. I don't know that there's, there we go, there's a backstab, that there's really an easy mode per se. We can call it easier mm. mode. I think what helps with the sorcerer is you get strong spells very early. You do, soul arrow is, um, is quite something. Um, you know what, I, well, no, I, I feel like I wanna go ahead and, and, uh, and take things from here because um, I was gonna go back to the bonfire because I, I see I, I have some humanity. These dudes are a pain because they will turn ghostly. Oh! And just like that. This one, this area is actually rather tough because you have a lot of archers scattered around. So if you're not careful um, and you're facing the wrong direction and an arrow comes your way, boom. Yeah, I thought I had cleared out all of the enemies in that area once, and suddenly an arrow just flew at me, and I was almost dead. See, here's my problem now, is that now my humanity is left with my souls. So let's, let's see if I am talented enough to get my humanity and my souls back. Mm -hmm. And if we need some help, maybe we can set down our uh, white soapstone, and maybe someone will invite us to their game. Hey, that's actually a really good idea. You have to be far enough away from, um, from a bonfire to do it. And uh, are we not online? It doesn't look like we are online because, oh, maybe I'm just too close to, uh, let's go up to the top. I might be too close to the Yeah, to the I bonfire. believe you have to set it up where the enemies are. So we should clear them out first before we attempt to put down a soapstone. Yeah, I thought maybe I'd be lucky and I'd be able to drop my soapstone there. Let's see if it light, lightens up. Huh, no. Perhaps we are playing offline then. Yeah, could be somebody can come in. I was wondering why we didn't see, oh, I just put myself in a really dumb position. Well, I guess that worked out. Cheese a fireball when in doubt. Oh, you know what? I can also try to parry. Oops, not like that. Oh, that attack, you just can't parry, I don't think. So I definitely set myself up for uh, for failure. That's all right, backstabs are more fun if I can pull them off. Now, of course, we also need to be signed into PSN, so maybe we should check that if we aren't already. Yeah, sorry guys. Definitely not signed into PSN. It's trying. Oh, you know well, what? That's, yeah, yeah, well, we, we, work, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we don't want to waste everybody's time <laughs> sure, signing in the PSN. I should have, I should have made sure beforehand, but I thought we were online. So I haven't, we haven't seen any messages, notes, ghosts, anything, which I thought was a little unusual, because um, even, even before the official release, this area did have. I was running into all sorts of ghosts and whatnot. So, and definitely lots of messages. People want to help through this entire area because it is, like I said, I think it's one of the tougher areas to kind of deal with. Yeah, I've placed down my soapstone and within minutes, I've gotten an invite. Okay, see, this is the dude that I really want to get rid of first. Uh-oh. No! Not my best moment in Dark Souls, for sure. That's all right. I mean, you are used to the robe, so maybe switching out to your previous armor would help a little. 
Yeah, it's also, I mean, users don't care one way or the other, but also because the TV is so far away, <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, we're getting kind of a different picture than you viewers at home. So, uh, yeah, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and see if I can handle this dude and get my souls back. I like the Chaos Fireball, even though it's kind of overkill. I'd get out of the way and go for those souls if you could. Getting behind the... Damn it! Hooray! Now how much success have you had playing with people online that maybe are on your friends list or you at least recognize? None. Or um, I think... Like with Demon Souls, you can kind of game it in a way so that if you try to time things together. Um, but I, you know, I'm pretty sure that Dark Souls tries very hard to match you up um, with people that are more or less your level. Um, that's not always going to be the case, but I think it does make that attempt. So if you want to, like, say, play with a friend, that's going to be a hard thing to do. That is going to be a hard thing to do. Um, in, in fact, on the Xbox 360, you can't even be in party chat. Um, when you play, and I know a lot of people complain about that, um, but I think that in, if, if you are, maybe you're sort of missing on, on kind of what some of the special qualities of this game are, and, and one of them is, you know, and I, and I worded it in the review to, to kind of point this out, but, you know, kind of a, a chorus of silent voices, if that makes any sense, um, which is to say that, you know, you're meant to feel both alone, but also that you have silent guides at the same time, and it's and it's very unique in games. I mean, obviously Demon's Souls is the only other thing that's ever really quite accomplished something like that, but I think it's very special. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of a sequel to Demon's Souls, a spiritual successor, but one major change is there's no longer MP. So can you talk a little bit about how like the spells work? Yeah, now, now um, with spells, instead of having mana or anything like that, you have um, a limited number of spells. It's kind of like with the Estus Flasks. You have a limited number of spells that you can that you have to work with, and every time you rest at a bonfire, um, you um, you replenish that number. So, for example, I've used all my all my fireballs, all my chaos fireballs, and so now I have no more until I rest. Yeah, because I remember in Demon Souls, magic was a little overpowered because you could just say get a uh, MP recharge and just wait until you had a lot of spells to use. Yeah, the Tower Knight, you could, for example, cheese pretty well. Um, by just casting Soul Arrow over and over again. So this time they've kind of tried to balance that out with having this limited number of spells. That doesn't mean that there aren't times where you feel like you can sort of get away with a little much with magic at certain times, um, but not nearly to the extent as, as, as you could before. So I do sort of miss my, my robes, but let's go ahead and try even a different set, right? So there's also... Oh, you know what? I love this helm. <laughs> so I'm going to put on this helm, but I'll put it on in, in, um, with the silver knight outfit. Just so that people can get an idea of the different ways you can look. This is... <laughs> I'm much faster now. Yeah, I've seen people with that helm, and I was always perplexed at where they got it, because we were always in similar areas, but they would show that off just for kicks. I think it just looks cool. You get it from, um, oops, from two mini bosses um, that you have to that you have to fight in the in the hallway on your way up here. But I mean, it isn't a guaranteed drop. You do need to have, or at least be human to have, increase your drop rates. Yeah, or there is a ring um, that you can that you can find as well. So, for example, if I wanted to equip that ring, which um, yeah, let's go ahead and equip it, right? So we're, we're here to show people different stuff. Um, if I can find it, it looks like a snake. There we go, Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. So, and now in theory, I should get a lot more, a lot more item drops. I think there's a dude up there, it's hard to see him, yep.
There's also another one of those magic spewing dudes that is around here after uh, after I get to the other side. And they, they really are a pain. Oh, there is an archer somewhere. So compared to Demon Souls, can you actually say that they've improved in all places, or are there some places where it's actually worse than Demon Souls? I think every everything is improved that could be improved. Um, I think the, the only thing that you could potentially look at as more of a problem is in Demon's Souls, there were only a couple areas where the frame rate would drop. Um, there are more areas in which that happens here. Um, but on the other hand, this world is maybe, what, four times as large? True. So it's probably a little more understandable. And the areas are much more packed with, with stuff. So would you say it's better than Demon's Souls in every way? In pretty much every way. It's, it's funny because... You know, I don't think it would be fair to say that this is just demon souls all over again. You know what I mean? You know, this this really is it's got the core of demon souls, but it's it's so much more. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the way the world is structured and the way you move through the world. You know, you, you have a, a sense that you're in one single place with lots of different regions, as opposed to you know, in a, in, a, in a hub and having the world split up the way Demon's Souls was. You know, this feels like one contiguous place. And it's pretty, it's pretty amazing looking. I mean, a lot of people will point out that, okay, it's not the best technology, and that is true. This won't win any, you know, great awards for, for its graphics engine. But on the other hand, the art is really outstanding um, and with so many different creatures and things like that. Um, you know, every time you go to a new area, it's not just the same creatures over and over and over again. You know what I mean? It's, it's a huge, you know, it's just a, a big array of awesome looking beings that you see all the time. I mean, they will repeat some creatures again. Oh, they will, they will, They will improve them in so many ways. Like, these are pretty much the basic enemies that you'll meet in the first stages. Yeah, but, but they're they, crystallized. Yeah, they've been crystallized and changed completely. And obviously, at, at the early stages of the game, you're not going to want to take these dudes on because you would, you would suffer immensely. Now, your character looks really cool now, but like on the onset of the game, uh, how much customization can you actually do with that character? Not, a, I mean, not a whole lot at first. Um, when you when you start Dark Souls, you do start, um, and I've basically come the way I came. Um, when you start, you do choose a class, and you get to you know change how you look. But after a while, you're not going to see really how you look um, because you're going to have stuff on. Um, although, shall I change into something that shows off my? Oh, maybe when you're not being beaten on, yeah. it would be a good idea. <laughs> Wonderful, that worked out well. I mean, you are in hollow form, so I don't think you'll be all that lovely looking underneath that armor. No, but I think it's interesting to look at me when I'm in hollow form. Which is to say, undead. Now, neither of us have actually beaten this game. I think I'm about maybe 50 or 60 hours in. I mean, what's your estimation about you know the length of this? Oh, um, definitely, I mean, it depends on how much you put into it, I could you know. Um, maybe, you know, for some people it might be 60 hours, for some people it might be 100 hours or even more. So, there we go. All right. Boom. I'm getting to a place soon where I'm going to be able to, to rest. And I only have one flask left. <laughs> All right. There we go. Try it. Yep. See, that's what you get. That's what you get for trying to mess with me, buddy. Oops. So yeah, there, there used to be chests at the end of these hallways that I've sort of emptied out. I think, is this a new chest that I haven't seen? Make sure it's not a mimic as well. Yeah, here's something that you need to do whenever you, oh crap. Yep, that's an enemy. And that's why you need to check. 
but try not to have that happen to you. All right, so that now you know what that is. That is a mimic. Um, a mimic is an enemy that disguises itself as a treasure chest. You go and open it, and it does that. In this case, I thought I'd be clever. I'm going to show everybody, hey, you should probably attack treasure chests before you try to open them. Um, and then there you go. Yeah. So what do you think we should uh, head maybe to a different area? Yeah, we should probably go to a different area. Um, do we sh Maybe showing off another part of uh, an Orlando. Oh, I mean, you don't have access to the painting, do you yet? No, I can, I can, we can walk to the painting. Yeah, we can do that. And we can show off a different enemy that's in there. But when I do that, I'm going to uh, change into my gold robes. Because that is a place where I want to be more mobile. And you'll, you'll see why when you see this particular enemy. I mean, I go the opposite route because I'm so strong. I just go heavy armor and bash them in one hit. But you have a different playing style, completely different build. So it really depends on how you've made your character. All right. So some of our readers want to know if there are any bosses that have like a special ambience to them. Their main, they're kind of talking about uh, Maiden Astria in Demon Souls for like an example. I can't really remember that boss off the top of my head. So maybe yeah, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head either. I don't remember that boss in Demon Souls either. Um, waiting for the elevator. So a special ambience, like as in. Um, I'm thinking like scene. like an elemental, yeah, yeah something like that. Um, yeah, I mean there are there are bosses. For example, when I go down into the fire area, um, none of the bosses there have been susceptible to my pyromancy, which kind of stinks. On the other hand, I think Sif, um, who is the the big wolf with a um, sword in his mouth, with a sword in his mouth, is pretty susceptible to fire. So I was able to. You can kind of cheese him down to almost half health um, at the beginning by just kind of using a whole bunch of fire. So this is. Um, this is another cool area that I like visiting. And you can see here one reason why. Now, I could, but I'm not going to show every, you know, um, I could show everybody the um, up in that building. Yeah, I was you always could, you cross the rafters. Yes. Yeah, I hated that part. It's like, you got to be very careful. <laughs> They're throwing daggers at you. They throw it, daggers at you, and you have to cross the rafters, and you can fall at any time. And if you're not careful, the first time you go in there, you also have the whole deal with, um, with the, um, whoops, with the chandelier crashing down. So if you're not careful, you can jump onto the chandelier and basically go crashing to the floor <laughs> and kill yourself. So, which I did. I was actually hoping that enemies were directly below me, so I'm like, I'm gonna cut that with my mace somehow. It's kind of right. funny, you can strike ropes and chains with like a blunt object and they will immediately break. So yeah, these dudes are kind of agile and they throw daggers, which makes them very, very annoying if you, if you aggro one. So that's why even, even though you think, oh, these guys aren't so hard, they go down in a few hits. You know what, you get three of these dudes sh sending daggers your way, you're in trouble. So we'll try to go around and take one at a time. I actually rather like this room. It's it, there's just so many different er, different types of areas. But I mean, I could try to just beat him at his own game. But I was gonna say I can I can throw knives too. The nice thing is that they drop their knives as as loot drops. So we'll inch our way up to the painting, which I don't think I can get into. Yeah, you need to actually go back to the asylum, which I don't think you have really. Uh, but yeah, once you explore the asylum and return to the cell you start in, you can get the item that will let you enter the painting. Oh, I've been to the asylum. Have you gone back to your cell though? Um, no. Oh, hello. Oh, see, they think they're gonna be clever, and they were taking their, uh... there we go. <laughs> Beat them at their own game, right? All and right. in the meanwhile, drop, uh, 
We previously oh, answered nice. a question about that boss, the maiden. Uh, apparently, we got it kind of wrong, and the user is trying to correct us about it. They want to know, let's see. Ambience was a reference to the final boss, the fifth archstone, the Valley of Defilement archstone, and she has a special ambience to her. If you know what that means, do you think there's a boss related to that? Because that kind of stumps me. Yeah, not that, not that I've encountered. Not yet, anyway. Nothing that nothing that strikes me as as a particularly special, aside from elemental properties. I'm gonna run away. One of the best things you can ever do in Dark Souls is to lure lure enemies away from the pack. It's usually best to do it with uh, your. Uh, with your back behind yourself or whatever. Anyway, have your shield up when you back away. Yes. And also be mindful of the lock-on um, because it will lose its, um, its lock if you get out of range. So you have to be careful. Oh, well, that was helpful. And really, I'm kind of wasting that fire orb because it's better when you have a few enemies coming after you because it does splash damage. Oh, great. <laughs> but the lock, the lock disappeared in the middle of my throw. So what do you make out of the storyline itself? I mean, it's pretty vague when you begin. It is pretty vague when you begin. It's it's vague much of the time. So you'd say there's almost like no focus at all, really, or well, things things start to come together in time. Um, I mean, a lot of it is is sort of the the lore of the world and how things came to be the way they are. Um, but really, that that stuff is is very very secondary. Um, you know, again, you reach the point where you're supposed to kill four very, very particular bosses um, and, and feed their souls. Um, but really, I'm more wrapped up in the adventure that, that I'm making for myself. Except I just wasted a... <laughs> yeah, I believe Sometimes most of the I forget. I believe most of the storyline happens within that first cutscene and everything else they just kind of explain better, you know, what that all meant. All right, let's, uh... all right. Not close enough for the fireball. Let's do that one. Nice thing is about the, oh, did I miss that one too? That's very depressing. Is that another enemy behind you? Is there? Would you ever kill him? No, I don't think so. Nothing like a good backstab. Or as somebody called it in one of the uh, the video comments, like a a, a butt attack. So, what's the way, best way to get daggers if you run out of them? The best way to get daggers, um, I'm not sure. There's a there's a blacksmith back in, or not blacksmith, but there's a merchant on Dead Berg. I'm not sure if he, he carries them or not. I personally think the easiest way is just to farm these dudes. Because they're definitely the first place I remember getting throwing knives. They're, well, not the first place, because there are assassins underneath the Undead Berg in the lower part that also um, have a very similar type of behavior, and I think that they also drop daggers. But yeah, I think that uh, I will not be able to enter the painting. Yeah, this massive painting is another dungeon, completely optional, with an optional boss as well. When you go into there, the boss will actually tell you to just leave, and you can opt to do that. It sounds like the kind of thing where you just take somebody up on his offer, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, if they're half dragon, half human, or half giant, or whatever they are, I think I'd choose to run away if I can. Listen to them. All right, let's get out of here. And let's head across the way. Um, and we can introduce ourselves. 
to uh, some of the lanky gargoyles down there. So right now we still are uh, hollow, but what's the we benefit of collecting humanity and using it? Well, it changes, it changes the way that um, certain enemies um, are handled. Um, it also changes your, um, your item drops, and it also allows you to invade as well as be invaded. And it also means when you use your, your soapstone, um, it can allow you to summon people to your world. Um, if you're hollow and you drop your soapstone, then you can only be summoned to someone else's. It is really dark. There are two big dudes up here, but I can't see a thing. Now my personal strategy to uh, use humanities and souls is I have the homeworld miracle, which takes me back to a bonfire immediately. So I don't like to run around with extra souls and extra humanity because you can lose that so easily. So what I try to do is warp back or just get to a bonfire immediately, use the souls to turn human, or use the humanity to turn human, and kindle the fire until I have 20 flasks and just level up and repair items as much as I can. Which is nice is, uh, at first, you can't like modify your weapons on your own, but once you visit a blacksmith, they can teach you and give you items in order to uh, smith yourself at uh, bonfires. These guys will block the fire attack, so you have to you have to be timing well. Not like that. Now I haven't done pyromancy at all. Are there any spells that will actually harm you a little? Not that I've found. Um, for example, the Great Chaos Fireball leaves lava all around that area, but I've never been harmed by it. I know there's a specific pyromancy spell that makes you sacrifice HP, but it gives you a giant boost to what is it? Strength, endurance. I haven't seen it, um, so I, I don't have that one yet. I'm, I'm sure it exists, but I haven't seen it. There are some other ones though, like there's there is a, a, a spell that that um, casts poison um, that's considered in, in the pyromancy realm, but I don't use that one either. I mean, I mean, if you're gonna do damage, just do the damage. You know, just throw fire. Now, is the control scheme pretty much the same as Demon Souls? Oh yeah, it's uh, readers asking, and yes, the the controls are are really spot on. Um, there's there's really not a whole lot you could fault with them. Everything acts the way you expect it to act. Well, there there's there's one thing um, that just came up, and that's that's really the lock on is sometimes not perfect, and you would consider that a control issue. For the most part, like the NPCs you meet, are they all pretty much friendly, or are somewhat even hostile when you first meet them? Um, there, there is a chance that an NPC that seems friendly may not be all that he appears to be, um, and I'll just leave it at that. And you got to remember, there are covenants in this game, so if you belong to the wrong organization, certain. Um, NPCs around might treat you differently. They might be nicer, or they might attack you, or they just might not offer their services to you. Absolutely. Okay, this looks very similar to the lightning spear that I have, um, in that it does lightning damage, but it looks like maybe it has a, a longer range. Let's find, let's find out. It might also be upgraded with different items, so that might be a little different. This might be worth playing around with. Upgrading it, not now. I now wish I did not have, I wish I had put this in my, my secondary slot. Pull back out and I'll change weapons because he's gonna kind of be stuck in there. Where's my, uh, my mace? But you know what? I think we should just try to put him out of his misery. <laughs> So how many enemies have you actually encountered that do like really harmful status effects? You know, like Curse, which is probably the worst one in the game. Uh, you know, there, there's an area in the game where you're constantly being um, bombarded by different status effects in, in, in the Blight Town area. And as you, as you go through the depths and get into Blight Town, um, poison is a big deal. 
Um, bleeding is a big deal down there, and cursing is the biggest deal of them all as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there are even some bosses that are able to curse you, and that is really, really bad when you're almost done fighting this huge demon, huge dragon, and they just hit you with curse and it's game over. Yeah, and for, for people to, to know what curse does, curse, if you fall victim to the curse, um, halves your health bar, and it stacks. So, so if you have health, if you have a half health bar, and then you, um, and then you get cursed again, you now have a quarter of a health bar. And there are only two ways that I know of to cure a curse. One is a special item. There's a stone that um, the dude after you go through the gargoyle yeah, boss. There's uh, a dude up in the undead church. Parish, yes. Yeah, that that um, that has a stone that will cure it. Or you can go find a special healer. Um, who's on the other side of uh, New Londo Ruins. Getting to him is a real bear. I'm just telling you now. I haven't even tried. There's so many ghosts in there. I mean, you can hit them once you're cursed, but it is too much for me. So just to let you know, this is kind of, uh, this is this is a blacksmith here. And uh, this, is, this is where you can upgrade a lot of your stuff. So for example, if I wanted to start upgrading um, my equipment, this is where I'm gonna do it. Um, I can't, the, with my own lightning spear, because it requires titanite chunks and I don't have any, or I have only one and it needs three um, for the next upgrade. But on the other hand, I could start upgrading that demon spear, but there doesn't seem to be really any purpose to that. I mean, if you hit square, you can see more details about each weapon just yep. besides its own strength. You sure can. And you can check out its lightning stats, how much it blocks when you put it up to parry, as well as what uh, parameters are getting bonuses from it. Exactly. So everything, you know, it, it just sort of depends on your own play style and stuff like that. Take a look at uh, modifying armor. Now talking about play styles, you've joined several covenants and you weren't really sure what exactly they did and how satisfied were you with each of them? Sometimes you don't necessarily know exactly how a covenant is going to affect you until you find out. Um, in other cases, you know pretty much immediately. Like there's the um, the Forest Covenant. Um, I forget the exact name of the covenant, but when you go into the forest, there's a cat in the window of a building that you can miss if you go past him. Even a number of times, you might miss that he's even there. Um, but joining that covenant allows you to walk freely through those woods, which is a real gift, considering there's a lot of stuff in there that is going to murder you. Um, now, the covenant that I'm in, um, allows allows me access to those pyromancer um, sp some special spells like pyromancy. Now, but on the other hand, if you um, if you if you tick the covenant off, they will make a uh, they'll, they'll, there will be eggs planted on your head. All right, so one more uh, we'll go one more place and, and see if there's something for me to attack, and then we are going to wrap it up because tomorrow we are going to have another now playing. We're gonna be showing a game you may have heard of, Curtis, called Rage. Yes, I have heard of it and been playing it. And uh, have you been enjoying yourself? Yeah, it's been pretty fun. Mix of guns and driving. Excellent. That sounds like a good time to me. But the orb is quivering. And uh, we'll see. These, oh, these dudes are like super powerful versions of the other ones, so I'm just gonna run away. Which is a valid tactic and nothing wrong with it <laughs> in Dark Souls. Especially when you're out of Estus Flask and can't heal yourself. Exactly. So I'm gonna run to this spot. Don't go in that room because there's a big, big demon in there too. Um, so I think, Curtis, that about wraps things up for us. I appreciate you joining me for a now playing, taking a look at Dark Souls, um, clearly one of our favorite games of the year. Um, you know, we'll see how, how it shapes up once the year is done and, and, um, and, and how, uh, how it looks in our Game of the Year nominations. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be an interesting year for that. Um, but thanks for joining me. This is Curtis Said. I'm Kevin Van Ord, and we'll see you tomorrow for, um, for our Now Playing for Rage.